The longer the game goes on, the stronger all of these champions become. Hey, what's going on summoners? My name is Nathan Ng and welcome back to another Pro Guides video. We're going to be taking a look at 10 of the strongest late game champions. Scaling champions are known for their ability to dominate long games. This is often due to their kits having insane scaling and or utility. Pair this with the fact that you get items and levels as the game goes on and you've got yourself a pretty powerful scaling champion. In exchange, however, these champions tend to have fairly weak early games, sometimes. Today, we're going to be diving into some of the best scaling champions for each role alongside an easy to follow build path if you'd like to try them. Let's not waste any more time and dive straight in. Starting us off strong, we've got Camille in the top lane. This true damage connoisseur is well known for her ability to obliterate both tanks and squishies. While her early game is fairly weak, once she reaches 2 or 3 items, she becomes an absolute monster. Her kit lets her embrace her versatile playstyle. Camille is able to group up and delete the frontliners, dive in the backline and pop squishies, or she can permanently split push and destroy turrets. No matter how you choose to play her, Camille can be a monster to deal with if you're able to get past her slightly weak early game. Overall, if you need a safe champion that can hyperscale top lane, then make sure you check out Camille. Taking a look at her build, you'll be taking Teleport and Ignite as your summoner spells. If you're just starting out with Camille, feel free to take Flash until you get used to her hookshot range. As for your runes, you'll be taking Grasp, Shield Bash, Second Wind, Unflinching, Magical Footwear, and Biscuit Delivery. These runes will give you a great trading pattern thanks to your Q and passive. Plus, the sustain for Biscuits and Second Wind will help you scale easier. Finally, make sure you build Divine Sunderer, Plated Seal Caps, Ravenous Hydra, Death Stands, Maw of Mortius, and Guardian Angel. If you need the MR earlier, feel free to grab Maw as early as second item. Moving on to our next pick, we have a hyperscaling tank. That's right, frontline players, we weren't going to leave you hanging. While someone like Orin scales well because they help their team, Scion scales by making himself an absolute meat shield. His ability to stack HP and deal a ton of damage thanks to it makes him a danger the longer the game goes on. Pair his infinitely stacking HP with the new Heart Steel and the increase with Grasp and you got somebody that can easily reach 7.5k health. Even champions like Vayne struggle to deal with you because you can itemize with things like Frozen Heart. Overall, if you're a tank player that wants to take control in your own games, make sure you pick up Scion so you can scale to the moon. Diving into his itemization, you'll be taking Flash and Teleport as your summoner spells. You can take Ignite in winning matchups, but I wouldn't recommend it. Looking at your runes, you'll be taking Grasp, Demolish, Conditioning, Overgrowth, Magical Footwear, and Minion Dematerializer. These runes will help you stack even more HP as the game goes on. Plus, with Demolish, your HP will eventually make you one-tap turrets. As for your items, you'll be building Heart Seal, play the Seal Caps, Sunfire, Titanic, Gargoyles, and then finish off with Thornmail for the Anti-Heal, Holebreaker for Split Pushing, or Force of Nature for Magic Resistance. Before we dive into our next champion, we want to remind you to all check us out at ProGuides.com. With our new $7.99 monthly subscription, you can take your gameplay to the next level with some brand new course and bootcamp content. If courses and lessons aren't your thing, don't worry. We've got challenger level coaches that are available 24-7 to help you out. As a member, you'll even get a 10% coaching discount. So, what are you waiting for? Go check us out and join the Pro Guides family. Anyway, let's not waste any more time and dive right back into the video. Pulling us back into the video, we've got a jungler that revolutionized what it meant to be an ADC. Kindred. Being the first of her kind in the jungle meant that they were a little bit difficult to master. That being said, once you get the hang of them and their mark system, they're extremely powerful. Offering one of the few infinitely scaling abilities in the game, Kindred can snowball hard by granting themselves increased attack range and execution damage. Knowing how to kite and invade is essential when playing this pair, but the reward is mastering an amazing jungler. Overall, if you're looking to outplay your opponents and scale through kills, Kindred is a champion for you. Taking a look at Kindred's build, you're going to be taking Flash and Smite as your summoner spells. Be sure to start the game with Green Smite. Your runes will consist of Conqueror, Triumph, Legend Alacrity, Coup de Grasse, Eyeball Collection, and Treasure Hunter. While you do scale hard, these runes will help you snowball even harder, so you can go ahead and get your passive stacks. As for your items, you'll be building Kraken Slayer, Berserker's Greaves, Collector, Infinity Edge, Rapid Fire Cannon, and finish off with either Lord Dominix or Guardian Angel. Moving on to our next jungle, we've got the AP King himself, Karthus. While most AP junglers scale relatively well, none of them can really compare to the beast that Karthus becomes. As the game goes on, Karthus grows in strength thanks to his kit offering extremely high scaling and DPS. As he picks up items and levels, Karthus is able to hit like a truck by landing even a single Q on a squished champion. After 3 items, he can single-handedly secure objectives and team fights by ulting beforehand. This easily puts the entire enemy team at half HP and takes them out of the fight. Overall, if you are looking for an aggressive AP jungler that scales extremely hard, look no further than Karthus. Let's get into this build real quick. For your summoner spells, you'll be taking Exhaust and Smite. If you're not comfortable without Flash, you can take that instead, but we highly recommend Exhaust. It offers great dueling potential and makes your Qs easier to land. 
be sure to start the game with Red Smite as well. As for your runes, you'll be taking Dark Harvest, Cheap Shot, Eyeball Collection, Ultimate Hunter, Presence of Mind, and Last Stand. These runes will help you scale and snowball the longer the game goes on. Finally, make sure you pick up Leandri's, Sorcerer's Shoes, Shadow Flame, Rabadon's, Zhonya's, and Void Staff for your items. Taking us into the mid lane, we've got Syndra. Ever since her mid scope update, Syndra has been absolutely dominating the ranks. While they may have hurt her early game a bit, she's easily one of the best scaling champions out there. As the game goes on, she never seems to stop ramping up. Her Q upgrades to having two stacks, her W offers additional damage, and her E gets a massive range buff, and her ultimate gives her a huge execute. On top of all of this, Syndra pretty much gets a free Rabidons at max stacks. Overall, if you're looking for a control mage that can annihilate anybody that stands in her way, Syndra is definitely for you. For those of you looking to play her, let's take a look at her build. You're going to be taking Flash and your choice of either Teleport or Ignite as your summoner spells. Teleport is usually a safer option, but if you're confident in your ability to kill your laner, feel free to take Ignite. Your runes will consist of First Strike, Magical Footwear, Minion Dematerializer, Cosmic Insight, Transcendence, and Gathering Storm. These runes will not only give you bonus damage, but they will help you gain an early lead so you can scale easier as well. As for your items, you'll be building Ludens, Sorcerer's Shoes, Shadow Flame, Rabadons, Zhonyas, and finish off with either Void Staff or Banshee's Veil. Moving on to our next mid lane pick, we've got the King of Hyperscaling, Cassidy. Cass has always held a special place in the league community thanks to his infamous level 16 power spike. Facing the Cassidy always seems to place your team on a timer because once he hits 16, he becomes a killing machine that can wipe out entire teams. While these past few seasons haven't been the best for Cassidy, it seems like he's finally getting a second chance thanks to the Rod of Ages. Overall, if you're looking for a champion that forces the enemy to end the game as quickly as possible, then Cassidy is the pick for you. Diving into this itemization, you're going to be taking Flash and your choice of Ignite or Teleport. Cassidy may be a scaling champion, but in some matchups, he can easily pick up solo kills with Ignite, so be sure you choose your summoner spell wisely. Your runes will consist of Electrocute, Sudden Impact, Eyeball Collection, Ultimate Hunter, Presence of Mind, and Coup de Gras. These runes will give you some extra early game damage so you can hopefully snowball and scale faster. Finally, your items will consist of Rod of Ages, Sorcerer's Shoes, Seraphs, Zhonyas, Rabadons, and Void Staff. Remember to buy your tier and Rod of Ages as soon as possible so they can start sacking. Now before we move on, let's not forget about our favorite pro guide tradition. Today, we want to ask you all, what is your least favorite champion to play with? Personally, I don't think it's played as much anymore, but I hate, 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 hate Pike. I just don't think that champion is fun to play against. But even if he's weak, you know, he can still dominate games and it just doesn't feel good to be killed by him. Anyway, let's get back right into the video. Getting us back into the video, we've got Jinx starting off our ADCs. Jinx has always been known for her hyperscaling identity. She is the classic example of a 3 item crit ADC that can dominate games once she gets her items. In exchange for her amazing late game, Jinx is a bit weaker early on even though she's fairly safe. Should Jinx ever scale hard enough to get her IE faster than usual, she can take over games with ease. Overall, if you're looking for an ADC that scales really hard and runs really fast, Jinx is going to be the carry for you. Taking a look at her build, you're going to be taking Flash and either Heal or Ghost as your summoner spells. Heal is a great option if you feel like you need some additional safety in lane. If you're able to scale for free, we recommend taking Ghost instead. As for your runes, you'll be taking Lethal Tempo, Presence of Mind, Legend Bloodline, Cut Down, Absolute Focus, and Gathering Storm. These runes will help you scale harder while also giving you a nice DPS boost thanks to Lethal Tempo. For your items, make sure you pick up Kraken Slayer, Berserker's Greaves, Phantom Dancer, Infinity Edge, Lord Dominix, and finish off with your choice of Guardian Angel or Bloodthirster. Moving on to our next ADC, we've got Kogma. This creature of the Abyss is known for his crazy amount of tank shred and mixed damage. Similar to Jinx, he offers a weak early game that forces you to play safe in order to reach that late game. Once you reach that late game, however, Kogma can shred through anyone and everyone thanks to his W. With his tank build options, Kogma also becomes extremely difficult to kill. Overall, if you're trying to space glide and embrace the front to back playstyle, be sure to check out Kogma. Diving into his atomization, you're going to be taking Flash and your choice of healer Ghost as your summoner spells. Take heal if you need some help in laning phase, otherwise make sure you take Ghost. Your runes will consist of Lethal Tempo, Triumph, Legend Bloodline, Last Stand, Conditioning, and Overgrowth. These runes will help you scale into the tank shredding beast that you are, while also giving you some support on your tankier side. As for your items, make sure you build Berserker's Griefs, Rageblade, Runins, Wood's End, Titanic Hydra, and Iceborne Gauntlet. The order of these items are fairly important, as Kogma doesn't really need a Mythic for a majority of the game. Make sure you pick up the Boots and Rageblade as soon as possible. Before we continue on to the end of the video, climbing can be really difficult and sometimes you'll need help or somebody to play with. If you want to join an amazing community of people like you that loves lists, talk pieces, and other things like this, check out our Discord using the link found in the description. So, what are you waiting for? Join us! Pulling us back into the video, we've got Senna starting us in the support role. Senna is infamous for her ability to gain a massive amount of attack range due to her souls. As the game goes on, Senna is able to progressively get stronger by attacking enemies and getting souls from minions. 
These cells grant her attack range, crit chance, and life seal, which are amazing stats to have on a marksman, or I guess support. While she can feel weird to play at first, she definitely is worth learning. Overall, if you're looking to become a carry for your team, make sure you pick up Senna. Moving on to her itemization, you're going to be taking Flash with your choice of either heal or exhaust as your summoner spells. Take whichever summoner your ADC doesn't take for optimal use. Your runes are going to be Fleet Footwork, Presence of Mind, Legend Alacrity, Cut Down, Bone Plating, and Revitalize. These runes will give you a lot of lane sustain and help you farm your souls early on. Finally, your items are going to be Umbral Glaive, Swiftness Boots, Eclipse, Rapid Fire Cannon, and your choice of Lord Dominic's or Muramana depending on if you need Tank Strat. If you opt for Muramana, make sure you pick up your tear early on so you can stack it ASAP. Last but certainly not least, we've got Yumi's support. We know, we know, Yumi is a champion that's known for AFK playstyle. While she does have a lot of negative feeling towards her, <laughs> including some of mine, it's important to note that she is a powerful champion. Not only does she offer her team heals, but she also greatly increases her adaptive damage and can constantly pump out buffs. On top of this, there are multiple versatile builds for her that can solve some of her bad laning matchups. Overall, if you're looking to embrace her inner enchanter, make sure you pick up Yumi. Taking a look at Yumi's itemization, you're going to be taking Exhaust and Ignite as your summoner spells. If your ADC decides to take Exhaust, you can opt for Heal instead. As for your runes, make sure you take Summon Airy, Mana Flow Band, Transcendence, Scorch, Presence of Mind, and Cut Down. These runes will not only help you scale, but it will also give you some much needed lane presence. Your items are going to consist of Moonstone, Chemtech Putrefire, Staff of Flowing Water, and your choice of Arden or Mikhail, depending on what your team needs. Since you don't build boots, make sure you pick up Watchful Wardstone as your final item. And that sums up our video for today. Don't forget to join our Pro Guides family at ProGuides.com. We offer exclusive giveaways and classes that you won't catch anywhere else, so stay tuned. And don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. We'll see you guys back in the next video. And don't forget, stay safe, stay healthy, and have a wonderful day. Peace.